one of the critiques is that the focus is shifting too much to humans. And I think there's a lot of examples where it is. Hey fellow animal respecters, welcome to another video. For those of you who may have missed it, I recently did a live stream with Dan Shepard, who some of you may know from the TV series Veganville. We covered loads of crucial topics, everything from effective animal advocacy to navigating conflicting ideas within the movement. Be sure to watch till the end for some hilarious bloopers. A massive thank you to Dan for having me on his channel. If you haven't already, be sure to check him out at Grumpy Vegan Granddad and subscribe to his YouTube channel so that you can follow the inspiring animal advocacy work that he does. While you're over on Dan's channel, you may also want to watch our full chat so you can hear the context surrounding these points as this video will be a rapid fire highlight reel. With that, let's get into it. But yeah, I mean, I th the biggest example for me that I kind of focused on a lot with the last live stream was the whole go vegan for animals, earth, and health. I mean, that's a, a three-part claim that all of a sudden the animals are only one element of, which, you know, roughly, you know, call it a third um, uh, of our message is them, and the other two-thirds is not. And I appreciate there's some environmental relations to our fellow animals, but oftentimes it's a human environmental concern. Not It's, it's not mindful of who else is yeah. living there. So that, that to me is a big example that I went through because I think a lot of the debate that's been happening in the movement. One of the critiques is that the focus is shifting too much to humans. And I think there's a lot of examples where it is. So that, yeah, that's really they, kind they, of, yeah. Where I'm yeah, I just saw race lovers comment. I mean, I, I agree. All those, all those three things are connected. I think it's just, it's, it comes down to framing because to me, 80, 90% should be focused on our fellow animals. And then the other peripheral topics we should kind of have like ready to go, but not kind of on our leading point. So it, it's, 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 yeah, it's, <laughs> there's actually, a, there's some links. I did a timestamp for the chat I had with um, Roger. There's some links that take us specifically to how to apply the whole Roger's concept, basically of focus versus scope. So there's the focus that you, you focus on, and then there's the scope of everything else that is kind of related. Right, explain that to me, right? Make me understand this, right? So here yep. we go. It's me, <laughs> I've, got, I've got sexy music on, it's me alarm, and for some reason I said, <laughs> it was like, it, I think it's a Roger Yates alarm. So yeah, <laughs> Roger's calling you on the cell. <laughs> right. So come on, come on, Jeremy. Make me understand this this scope and what was it? The scope and focus. So focus, yeah, so, right. So, that, so, that's so, the so, trouble I have with it. <laughs> so I guess if you were to think about like circles, like the the middle part of the circle is the focus, and then the outside, if there's a second circle overlapping that, would be the scope. Um, and that's your things like the environment and human health and, and soil concerns and all that. The middle is our fellow animals and ending their breeding, use, and murder. Okay, so if I had a pair of binoculars and I was focused on an animal, that was, that was, that's my focus. And mm -hmm. then the scope is what I can see in the peripheral all the way around. Yeah, that's a great gotcha. way to put it. So simple, so simple. Yeah. I use, I think I use that anyway, because when I'm talking to people and i talk about the animals and i see that that disconnection is not it's not salvageable it, it, they're not going to see mm. the animals i then look at them and think okay do you look healthy do you look like you're concerned about your health uh, how old are you you know are you getting to middle age where a lifetime of eating animal products is going to manifest itself and start giving the problems that are associated with it uh, and then if they're not interested in health and they don't care, well, I, I could get hit by a bus tomorrow, so I don't care about my health, you know? Then do we focus on environment, you know? So I sort of use different tools. Um, I mean, would you you wouldn't say if they don't get the, the animal thing, if they can't sort of get this, this sort of cognitive thing away and they, they can't see animals... As, as animals, as living, breathing, sentient beings, only food, would you walk away from that conversation? That's a really tricky question. I think it depends. It's not, it's it's, not it's, tricky it, for me because I wouldn't walk away. I'd, I'd start moving down the health route and the, I'd do anything to try and get what, them to change. I'd lie what to there, them. What, 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 well, <laughs> what if there's someone else who had just stopped who may be open-minded to the ethical 
points. That's where I would be like, all right, this conversation's going nowhere, nowhere because we've all been in those conversations that go on a bit too long. Um, and I prefer, there's 99% of the population that supports animal use. So I prefer to focus on the low hanging fruit, um, who, who is open to the ethical concern because that's the most, um, and this is, I can link research later that's specific around animal advocacy around this, but that's the biggest motivator for change. Um, the biggest change and also the most likely to uh, stay vegan, um, is the ethical point. So that's where I drive that home. Cause oftentimes if people bring up health or the environment, it's usually positive. So I'm like, yep, you're right. Now let's bring it back to our fellow animals. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't dis I don't disagree with that at all. Um, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you've exhausted it, we can start touching on health side of things and then we can always bring you back to animals. But I think we should, I think personally that, that toolbox of, I mean, obviously if, if you've got, got no sort of info and you, you're not very clued up on health you shouldn't even tackle it you shouldn't tackle anything that you haven't got at least a bit of info on but i seem that as a as a bit of a wasted opportunity if someone's going to walk away when you could pique their interest let's say a bodybuilder comes up and he's big tough macho bodybuilder he's bought into this this sort of yeah eat meat men barbecue all this Caveman, caveman in mood, strong fire, all this bullshit, yeah? And he's not listening. And then you say, well, did you know that vegans have more serum uh, um, testosterone than, than non-vegans? Did you know that? And that one thing may get them to start listening to your message a little bit more. And what I'm getting from you is that you wouldn't do that because that you just walk away from that conversation. This is the bit that I don't understand. I know you've got research on it all, but I couldn't personally do that. I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be black and white for me. I'd just walk away once someone's not open to it. I, I think there's a lot of um, different ways we can go. I mean, for those of us who aren't queued um, up on nutrition, I think that just refer them to game changers. I mean, it has a reducitarian message, which is another topic, but um, I, there's, there's great documentaries out there. I think, if we can point people to those, that's probably gonna be stronger than us all doing our own individual research. But I think the biggest thing when it comes to health is we've got, we've got two things to decide between. Do we say there's no um, nutritional requirement or do we say it's better for us? Now I'm very firmly in the camp of no um, nutritional requirement or no biological requirement. And I just reference, you know, there's one for basically every country, but for the UK, the Dietetics Association clearly says every stage of life, there's, there's no nutritional requirement to eat or use our fellow animals. So I, I go with that. And then oftentimes people say, oh, you know, they'll, they'll critique the Dietetics Association and all this, this stuff. And, and, and once people reject that statement, to me, I know the conversation's unlikely to go anywhere. Um, but I mean, for some people, I completely agree. There is this, this benefit to the whole attractivism and, and almost like, <laughs> you know, I, for lack of a better explanation, like using our bodies to help communicate our morals. But it's not for everyone. And I think the flip side of it is I don't think animal advocates should, should feel pressured to have this perfect body. And if they're not doing it, they're not doing it right. And, you know, for some great, but for others, like it's not necessary, I don't think, to communicate a clear message of animal rights. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you can be <laughs> notified when the other clips are released. I also have some other upcoming videos I'm super excited to share with you. Thanks for watching and let's keep evolving our language to build respect for our fellow animals and I'll see you in the next video. Right, There's I mean, a lot in that so I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't want to go on too long but I have a lot of but, thoughts around that. Yeah, I mean, you could go on as long as you want mate. There's no, there's, <laughs> there's no time limit. I have no problem with you you going off in your tangent. Real quickly, my, my poorly timed laugh was in response to race lover, not what you were saying, but false Jeremy, if you eat vegans you won't get enough vitamin BS. <laughs> <laughs> For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.